States now in its bid to bridge the digital uh, divide in Africa and link the continent to the rest of the world. Main Street Technologies will lay an open access submarine cable system known as Main One, which will span almost 14,000 kilometers and provide international and internet connectivity to West Africa. Joining us now from Lagos to talk to us about the project is uh, Funke Opeke, who's the CEO of uh, the Main One Cable Company or the Main Street Technologies. Thank you very much for coming through. Just talk Talk to us about where West Africa stands in terms of Main One expected to be launched next year. We've seen CECOM come with much fanfare in East Africa. Well, Main One is indeed just almost ready to launch and we expect to have similar fanfare when we land on the west coast of Africa next month. Indeed, we are already landed. The cable is already in place and um, we are putting final testing in place right now all the way from Europe through to West Africa and will be in service next month. So um, we're excited yeah. about the possibilities for all of West Africa, similar to what has been experienced in East Africa over the past 12 months. Okay, now we're told that with Main One, it's coming in two phases. The first phase being a collaborative effort between Ghana, Nigeria, Angola, and even South Africa with the European states. And then the second phase is independent. What is meant by that? Okay, um, I should clarify that. Um, both phases one and two are actually independent. Main One is a private submarine cable company, which means it is not a consortium of operators. Our objective is to offer our capacity on an open access basis to all operators so they have the same access um, to high value mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. at the lowest possible price. Phase one, which is already built, runs from Portugal to Nigeria with a landing already terminated in Ghana uh, and is approximately 7,000 kilometers. We are starting work now on phase two, which will continue down the coast to South Africa. Uh, main one is not um, a collaborative effort with government. Um, mm -hmm. However, um, similar to all infrastructure projects, we have had to obtain licenses mm -hmm. from the governments of the countries in which we land the cable. All right, thanks for that. Now, investment-wise, how much has gone into this? Figures bandied about are somewhere in the region of 240 million US dollars. Is it more? Um, no. Uh, by the end of this month, we will have spent 240 million dollars to put the cable, phase one cable, in service, and we expect um, to spend um, about that much to extend the cable down to South Africa and put in some additional landings. All right, now all of this, you've had to seek um, interconnection partnerships with uh, operators in the United Kingdom in order to access about 120 cities. That gives you almost a, a monopoly or privileged access to some lucrative deals that are going to come from this uh, uh, submarine cabling system and all the opportunities it's going to provide for internet broadband services, data services that we've been talking about all throughout the show. How are you going to capitalize on this? Well, um, we're capitalizing by trying to bring this in with as much funfare as we possibly can once okay. we have the cable in operation, obviously. Um, but we think that privilege access is also well deserved by the people in West Africa who have had less than adequate access to broadband and internet services up until this present time. So we believe the enthusiasm we are seeing in the general public, in operators who are subscribing to our service, mm -hmm. in global partners who want to access um, information, customers, their subsidiaries in West Africa and know now that they can do that with higher quality um, at a lower cost mm -hmm. is, is really exciting. And we think um, once that momentum starts, it would be very difficult to stop. Okay, now one of the issues that's been raised from the East African experience, despite all the expectations, is that unfortunately the arrival of these underwater cables has not actually reduced the cost of broadband and that would be the greatest benefit to the consumer, faster broadband, cheaper broadband. Um, are you watching those developments closely and are there any interventions you can make in the interim before you launch to try to assure the market that it's going to be cost effective for the consumer? Um, 
yes, we are watching those developments. Uh, what we are doing on our part is ensuring that our capacity is indeed available um, to as broad a market as we possibly can. Uh, we do have some regulatory differences with respect to infrastructure here, which give us more flexibility in terms of connecting with retail operators. We are not a retail operator. Mm -hmm. However, we will also note the huge um, market opportunity and the addressable market that exceed, exists in Nigeria and also the number of operators we have in the market and the level of competitive intensity. So yes, indeed, we know that um, when cost structures uh, are reduced, the retailers do not necessarily mm -hmm. have the objective of passing on those yeah. um, price reductions to their retail customers. Yeah. Um, however, given the competitive intensity in this market, and the fact mm -hmm. that every operator will have open and equal access mm -hmm. to our services, we expect that that would actually kick in and accelerate um, the passing on of the benefits right. that we bring to the end consumer. Now, final question, even though you're not a retail operator, again, I think consumers are hoping you can influence the debate with the regulators. In East Africa, for instance, there's this whole issue of market dominance by one of the operators in South Africa are big issues about interconnect fees and the costs of broadband going forward. In Nigeria, what are the main issues that have affected ICT and that you, through this underwater cable, can impact on solutions and improvements and reducing cost? Um, the first which we immediately impact is obviously just access um, to this amount of capacity. We're bringing in 1920 gigabits per second, which is massive orders of magnitude beyond what, avail what is available in the region today. Um, we've deployed the capacity at a very competitive cost, and so uh, we look to pass those benefits onto the market. The one area that we remain challenged in, which you did mention with respect to regulation, is in nationwide distribution and the control of the assets that take the capacity into rural areas and indeed mm -hmm. other cities beyond the city in which our cable is landing, which is Lagos. Um, so we are hoping that part of the secondary effect in, of this would be reduction in the cost of mm -hmm. backbone networks because there is now um, an opportunity for all those operators to take our traffic into the hinterlands and reach the populations right. that exist there. And that um, those populations could also benefit uh, in the rural areas mm -hmm. from what the people in Lagos can immediately start enjoying next month.